Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to add an OWC solid state drive to your 27 inch 2010 iMac using our DIY upgrade kit. This is an advanced process and we recommend watching the video in its entirety before attempting this upgrade. Your iMac's original box will make a handy place to hold both the screen and the front glass while performing this upgrade. Simply reverse the styrofoam inserts so that the curved opening faces upwards on both sides. We've shut down and unplugged our iMac and have gathered our materials. We are now ready to begin. Attach the two heavy-duty suction cups to the upper corners of the glass front of the iMac. Then, gently but firmly pull forward on the handles to separate the glass from the magnets that hold it in. You can then lift the glass up and out of the iMac. At this point, you'll need to be extremely careful not to touch the screen itself, as the oil from your fingers is very difficult to remove. You can then set the back glass on the flat part of the styrofoam in the box and lean it against the box edge. Next, we need to detach the display itself. To do this, we'll need to remove eight Torx T10 screws, four on the left, and four on the right. As you remove each screw, you may want to grab onto it with the tweezers from the included tool kit to keep the screw from getting away from you, especially near the magnets. Being careful not to touch the screen itself, use one of your nylon pry tools to pull the display forward. In the upper left corner, you'll need to disconnect the vertical sync cable. You should be able to pull the cable up and out of its connector using your thumbnail. Next, we're going to disconnect the DisplayPort cable. To do this, gently squeeze the sides together and lift it up and out of its socket. Disconnect the AirPort cable by peeling off the tape that holds the connector in place and lifting it away from the logic board. Then, remove the display temperature sensor cable by gently lifting up on the connector until it comes free. Finally, detach the backlight power cable in the lower left by pushing on the clip release and pulling the connector downward. Keeping your hands on the outside edge of the display, you can now lift it up and out of the iMac and place it in a dust, static, and oil-free place. We recommend using the bag that covered your iMac when you first purchased it. The screen in its bag can now fit in the indented section of the styrofoam inserts. Next, we need to remove the memory. Use your Phillips screwdriver to loosen these three screws, which hold the memory cover in place. To remove the memory, first unfold the black plastic tabs in the memory bays, then pull the tabs straight downwards to eject the modules. We'll need to remove eight Torx T10 screws to detach the logic board from the back of the iMac. The first screw to remove is here, next to the graphics card heatsink. Next, remove this screw near the bottom of the iMac, then this one just to the left of it, which is hidden behind the audio cable. These two screws are shorter than the other logic board screws, but longer than the heatsink screws. After that, remove this screw next to the fan. You can then remove this screw in the middle of the logic board, and this one near the lower left corner of the board. The next screw is located in the heatsink frame. The final screw is on the far left side, holding the heatsink in place. Next, peel back the tape holding the IR sensor cable in place. You can then pull forward slightly on the IMAX frame, lift the IR sensor straight up and out of its channel, then tape it up and out of the way. 
You can now carefully angle the logic board assembly forward until the heatsink on the left clears the board just above it. It should stay in place. With the SATA connector facing away from you, attach the double-sided adhesive tabs one to each corner and peel the second side off. Then, do the same with the second set of pads on the pair nearest you, on top of the previous set. This helps account for the curved surface of the back of the iMac. The SATA port we're going to connect to is located in this area on the back side of the logic board. To get a better idea of how things are arranged, this is what the back of the board looks like. Attach the SATA cable that came in your DIY kit to the connector on the board. Once positioned correctly, the connector will simply slide into place. Route the cable through the notch in the frame so that the excess sits down towards the bottom of the iMac. Now we can place the SSD behind the upper right heatsink frame next to the hard drive and use the adhesive tabs to hold it in place. Next, disconnect the power connector from the existing hard drive and attach it to the splitter cable from the DIY kit. Route the power end alongside the optical drive then attach the other two ends to the power connectors on the original hard drive and the new SSD. Then, attach the data cable we installed earlier to the SSD. Finally, make sure all the cables are laying flat in place, then lay the board flat on top of it. To help align the logic board, plug in as many cables as you can into the rear ports of the iMac. You don't need to fill all the ports, but the more you have, the better. To aid in replacing the logic board screws, you can detach the audio connector. Then, place the two middle-sized screws in the lower right two holes in the logic board, but don't tighten them completely. Do the same with one of the longer screws in the hole to the left of the fan. Then repeat the process for the remaining three logic board screws. Finally, you can then attach the heat sinks using the smallest screws. Because the screws are not completely tight, you can use the heat sink to align the rear ports. You can tell the board is set properly when you can plug and unplug all the cables easily. Once it is, tighten all the logic board screws completely. You can then remove the cables from the back. If you unplugged it earlier, reattach the audio connector cable by aligning the connector with the port and sliding it in until it clicks. Next, reattach the airport cable by aligning the connector to its socket, pressing them together, and using the tape to hold it in place. Next, peel back the tape holding the IR sensor in place, slide the sensor down over the bracket behind the Apple logo, then use the tape to hold the cable in place. With the iMac facing you, position the memory module so that the notches are facing towards the left. Then, slide it into the slot it was before and gently but firmly push on the module until it snaps into place. Do the same thing with any other modules. Once they're all installed, fold the black tab over and tuck it underneath the memory like before. You can now replace the bottom cover. Get the three screws started, then adjust the door as you tighten so that it closes flush. Remove the display unit from the bag and, once again being careful not to touch the screen itself, set it into the iMac. Reattach the backlight power cable in the lower left by simply sliding it up into its socket until it snaps into place. Then, reattach the display temperature sensor cable by aligning it with its socket and gently pushing it into place. Next, being extremely careful, line up the DisplayPort connector with its socket and push it into place until it clicks. Finally, reattach the vertical sync cable and lean the display back into the case. Take the smallest flathead screwdriver in the newer tech kit and slide it through the top screw hole in the display and into the hole in the iMac. You can then use the screwdriver to lift the screen up and down. Do this to align the second screw holes and insert one of the Torx T10 screws so that the screen doesn't fall. Repeat the process on the other side. You can now replace the remaining screws and tighten them all down. Use your tweezers if the magnets make installing the screws difficult. Set the glass into place like this, but don't close it yet. 
Use the microfiber cloth from your kit to make sure that there's no dust trapped between the screen and the glass. You can then close the glass, which will be held in place by the magnets. Check along the top edge to make sure there are no gaps. If there is one, it'll usually be in the middle near the EyeSight camera. Simply place your thumbs on the front glass on either side of the camera and give it a small squeeze. The glass should now sit flush. Remove the suction cups and wipe down the front so it's clear of smudges. You may now hook your iMac back up, plug it in, and turn it on.